Welcome to Life at Tupelo Sunday Worship Service. If you're a first time guest attending in person, we have a free gift for you at our hospitality desk located in the main entrance of our church. If you're a first time guest watching our online service, following today's broadcast, go to our lifeattupelo.com website, fill out our online guest card, and our pastoral team would love to connect with you this week. We are incredibly honored that all of you have joined us for worship. And if you wouldn't mind right now, check in and share our service with your friends and family on your social media feeds. Now, here is this week's announcements. Join Vita in Tupelo Spanish Church Service today at 3 p.m. We are incredibly blessed by the ministry of Reverend Armando Loyola and congregation. This service is a time of preaching the Word of God in worship completely in Espanol. For more information, go to our website and click on our Vita in Tupelo link. On Monday, February 1st at 5.30 p.m. is our Life at Tupelo choir practice held here in the main sanctuary. If you or someone that you know is interested in joining the choir or would like to know more about it, connect with Demetra Carney following today's worship service. Also on Monday at 7 p.m. is our first Monday corporate prayer meeting held here in the main sanctuary. Everyone connected to Life at Tupelo is encouraged to join in this coming together as the body of Christ, praying for the needs of our church, city, and country. On Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. will be our midweek prayer meeting held here in the main sanctuary. Following prayer, Mosaic Night with evangelist Dylan Morgan will begin at 7 p.m. What an amazing month from our January revival services that we started our 2021 year. People were making biblical decisions to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and the Lord was filling and refilling people with the amazing gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Invite cards are available today at our hospitality desk where you can personally invite your friends and family to our upcoming revival services. On February 5th at 9 a.m. in the main sanctuary will be our weekly prayer meeting led by our prayer ministry team. We are incredibly thankful to those that are petitioning God and interceding for all the needs surrounding our church. Join us next Sunday for Vision 2021 Sunday as Pastor Carney delivers his burden for the year's Life at Tupelo mission. You don't wanna miss this annual event. Also next Sunday, Kids Life is having a planning meeting at 3 p.m. for everyone who would like to be involved as teacher, helper, or would like to know more about our children's ministry here at our church. For more information, connect with Carrie Fisher. And finally, if you or someone that you know would like to know more about our church to stay connected with our weekly and monthly events here at Life at Tupelo. Monthly calendars are available at our hospitality desk in the main entrance of our church. And our weekly video announcements can be viewed on our website at lifeattupelo.com. Thank you again for attending and watching our Sunday worship. Here at Life at Tupelo, we are a church where everyone is welcome, nobody's perfect, and anything is possible. Let's all stand for our 9 a.m. worship. Thank you for coming to Life at Tupelo, and thank you to those who are joining us online here at Life at Tupelo. We appreciate and are honored that you've all joined us here today. Amen. What an amazing month of January revival we've had around here at the house of God. Can we give God thanks as we start this service? Amen. Lives are being transformed and changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is still the answer for this generation that we're living in. Jesus Christ is still on the throne and he is still in charge and in control of all what's going on in our 21st century. Amen. Let's give God thanks for that. Amen. He will fulfill every word that he's spoken, everything in the word of God he will fulfill in our generation. An amazing story in the book of Acts was found in Acts chapter 3. After Jesus had ascended, the day of Pentecost was fully come. The Spirit was poured out upon those believers in Jerusalem. But it was the next day that they go to the temple for prayer and they see a man that was lame ever since his mother's 
birthing him. He was laid at this gate asking alms. And Peter and John seeing him say, he's asking for alms. And he says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. Rise up in the name of Jesus Christ and walk. It was a miracle that day because no longer was he lame but God did a miraculous work in his life his ankle bones was restored and he began to worship God and leave that day in the temple but the miracle was just not that day it was the next day because that's where Jesus Christ does his best work because the next day he does not go back into his old habits he did not show up the next day at the temple asking for alms because transformation had taken place he began to believe in a new dimension his old habits became his new behavior and that new behavior became the culture that he was living in and that's where Jesus Christ has positioned each and every one of us in our month of January revival we've seen the mighty hand of God we've seen the miracle signs and wonders we've had some old habits that we walked into the new year with but we've seen the behavior of the Holy Ghost on when we express our faith to him and when we change our behavior it creates a revival culture that changes the entire world around us and I'm asking us here today as we start this last Sunday of January if we would just step into that behavior and step into that atmosphere of faith and saying Lord as you did it in the book of Acts as you poured out your spirit upon all flesh I am stepping in that new dimension elders it's time to rise up young marriage it's time to rise up young people it's time to step into the dimension of the Acts of the Apostles and saying Lord I'm ready for that culture I'm ready for your spirit to be poured out in my family I'm ready for your spirit to be poured out in all of my surroundings come on let's raise our hands as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords God's here to do a great phenomenal work in all of our lives let's just worship him as the praise team leads us in worship today I was lost in shame, could not get past my blame until he called my name. And I'm so glad he changed me, darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out. I'm no longer bound, and I'm so glad he changed me. See, I'm now a new creation in Christ. The old has I can see the light and I'm so glad he changed me now I'm walking free I've got the victory it's all over me and I'm so glad he changed me see I now a new creation in Christ the old has gone there's new life I live I am 
of our revival. How many has been blessed by that? Amen. We have seen families come in, multiple people with, filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized. And I want to say from, from life at Tupelo, thank you for your giving. A revival is not cheap by no means. It takes money. It takes support. And thank you for continuing that. We had a marriage retreat this uh, week, and basically we were able to pay part of the food by the, the people that attended everything else the church was able to pick up and tote and that takes continued support and we thank you for that amen yes give yourself a hand amen you're investing into the future of your kids your grandkids and we thank you so much for that in matthew the bible speaks on where your treasure is there so your heart shall be and that and that's uh, that's powerful i mean we we Brother Carney and the church is sending out the contribution slips for last year. You know, everybody's getting them in the mail at your house. You can tell where your heart is. Amen. That, that, I know I'm the one speaking, but that's powerful. I mean, it. You can tell. You can tell when you open that up. You can say, "Is my heart at the church? Is my heart? Are we investing into our kids, into our future, or are we 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 investing into other things?" Amen. I want to be. I want to be on the side of the church in the kingdom of God. Amen. There's there's four. Amen. There's there's four ways to give here. Uh, by the hospital, we're not doing a traditional. We're not taking up offering, but by the hospitality desk. You can go to life at tupelo.com. Our faith teams app or text to give 
five, four, six, seventeen, thirty-six. Amen. I, as we get as our praise team's getting ready, let's just let's enter the enter into a time of worship. This revival has been so good for, for my family, for this church. And it we got a different preacher here this morning, but when, when we started, our pastor said we're gonna obey the Holy Ghost and the right man's gonna be here at the right time. Brother Sergeant, you're here today. We're so thankful. You're the man for today, and let's enter into a time of worship as they get ready. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us, God. Lord, we thank you for washing over us today. Lord, we thank you for healing our families. Lord, we thank you for filling our kids with the Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you for saving us, God. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
I'll sing this. Let's stand all over this house. Oh, if you want the hand of God to touch your life today, why don't you lift both of your hands? Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. I need your hand on my life today. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, let's praise him. Let's open our heart right now in this service. God's reaching for us. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Come on, let's talk to him for a minute. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go to the Lord in prayer, but let's talk to him for a minute. I love you, Jesus. God, I don't want to live a day without your hand on my life. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. It's a powerful thing. You see, the hand of God is a very powerful thing. Job said, in his hand is life, is the life of everything, and the breath of all mankind. It's very easy to see the hand of God in Adam's life, because God, the Bible says, took his hands and made and formed and fashioned Adam, but he formed you just the same and me just the same in the womb of my mother. That's how long God's known you. That's the hand of God on your life. The hand of God is a power. We're getting ready. we got many needs we're about to mention. Every one of these needs needs simply one thing, the hand of God to reach out and to touch them. That's all they need. If you're here today and you don't have the Holy Ghost, you need one thing in your life. You need the hand of God to reach right down and touch you today. That's all you need in this service. You see, let me tell you what can happen before we go to the Lord in prayer. What can happen is, see, the hand of God's on this service. And it's real easy to see everybody worshiping in these singers leading us and musicians playing and to feel God out here and to say man I've really I've really felt the hand of God today because the hand of God is on this service but let me tell you what you need today you need the hand of God that's on this service to reach a little further and you need the hand of God to touch your life today that's what God's wanting you to do wanting to do for you today is he's wanting to lay his hand on your life today Oh, and if we'll just reach up a little bit, God's going to reach down into service today. And we're all going to leave changed. You don't have to leave here without the Holy Ghost today. You don't have to leave here without your miracle today. All you need is the hand of God to touch your life. Oh, one more time all over this house before we mention needs. Would you pray that prayer with me? God, I want your hand on my life. Come on, tell him that today. God, I want your hand on my life today when I walk out these doors. I want to meet with you in this house today, Jesus. Come on, go ahead. You've got needs. Lord, I've got a need today, and I need you to touch it. Come on, that's what the Lord wants to hear from you today. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. There is certainly a special touch of the Holy Ghost that I feel, and I know you feel. God's going to do some great things. We've got some needs we want to mention, and we're going to give you an opportunity to lift your hands and certainly... If you're here today and you would like to come forth, we will anoint you with oil and we will pray the hand of God on your need today. But 
I ask you to remember Brother Anthony Sanders who needs a touch in his body today. Remember the Clay Coleman family. That is a family in town in Tupelo here has passed away. Let's remember his family today that, that God would comfort them. Let's remember Sister Eunice Veely. Let's remember Sister Judy Bland. They both are elders that need a touch of God in their life today. Let's remember Gary Snyder. Let's remember Rashmi Price that God would touch. These are requests that have been turned in. And certainly, I ask you to remember Bishop Carney, that God would touch him today. How many of you got faith? I mean, what a man of faith. Amen. And it's real easy when men of faith to say, well, they got enough faith. But we're going to, life at Tupelo, we're going to join our faith with his faith. And we're going to stand with him and agree with him and believe God with our precious pastor and his family. We're going to believe God and we're going to ask the Lord to touch today. Amen. I feel the wonderful touch of heaven in the service today. If you got a need in your life, why don't you just represent it with a lifted hand? Come on, we don't have to actually call it out. Needs all over this house. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you pray the hand of God on your knee today? Come on, right now. Would you lift your voice? Would you raise your voice to the Lord right now? We're going to stand in faith with you and believe God that God's going to touch you. God, I pray for every need in this house today. God, I pray for every name requested. I pray for every hand lifted, God, today that you would touch and that you would minister to every need in this house today. God, we love you and we honor you, Lord. God, I pray for all of those in this house today that need the gift of the Holy Ghost. I pray they wouldn't leave here without it today. I pray, God, that you would give them a revelation of how much you want to feel them in this house today, and they wouldn't leave without it. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We know that one touch from your mighty hand and every need is met, and every problem is solved, and everybody is healed, and every soul is filled with your spirit. One touch from your mighty hand, and we give you praise, and we give you glory today. Not understand. No one can bind your wounds with nails, scarred hands. No one can touch you like Jesus can. No all across this place right now. Father, we thank you for your presence that we feel. We thank you for the lives that have already been touched, Lord. We pray right now, God, that you will minister every person in this building, Lord. God, we need you. We can't make it without you, but we thank you for what we feel today. God, I pray you would touch every heart, every life, and every mind. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Everybody say amen. Man, you may be seated. Thank you so much for being here today. What a wonderful crowd in the balcony and on the bottom floor. Great spirit in the house today. And thank you for choosing to worship with us at Life at Tupelo. Can everybody say amen? amen. 
Amen. So good to have our guest. If you're joining us in person today or online, it's so good to have great friends of ours. Brother and Sister David Edwards, we love you guys. So good to see you. I mean that. Honored you join us today. And certainly I'm sure there's other guests. The Birch family, we love you. So good to have you, Brother Jason's mom and dad. Amen. Good to have you today. If you're joining us online, we welcome you to Life at Tupelo. And um, we had a wonderful weekend this past Friday and Saturday, and uh, we had our annual marriage retreat. We had, I think, 50 couples in attendance. What a great representation. Amen. And uh, certainly, if you were not here, I'm going to ask you, if you're married, to watch online on our Life at Tupelo family page. It will be posted online this week, and I encourage you to do that. We were blessed by the ministry of Brother and Sister Darren and Dewana Sargent, and uh, they did an incredible job. Amen, amen, amen. So certainly watch that on our Life at Tupelo family Facebook page, and if you are not on that, uh, if you are an attendee of this church and would like to be a part of that, just go online, Life at Tupelo Family page, and say you're an attendee, and we will accept you, and you can watch anything online there. Everybody say revival. revival. This Wednesday night, we will be continuing in revival with Reverend Dylan Morgan at 7 o'clock. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday, Pastor will be preaching, sharing the vision and the theme for 2021. And then Monday night as well, on February the 8th, everybody say revival. revival. We will have revival again Monday night, February the 8th, with Reverend Dylan Morgan. You do not want to miss. I can't tell you how many people have been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit the last few weeks. We've had about eight or ten be baptized. We give God all the glory and all the honor. Can everybody say amen? Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for praying for my father. It's been back and forth as to what our plans are. And uh, we actually, um, it was supposed to been, begin chemo in uh, St. Dominic's Tuesday of this week. And uh, we actually were able to get him in Germany. And uh, he was supposed to leave today at one o'clock, headed to Germany for four weeks for treatment uh, of all kinds. And uh, he was scheduled to fly out uh, today at one o'clock and yesterday afternoon about three o'clock he was he and my mother both were diagnosed with COVID and so you can't fly with COVID and so uh, anyway we need a negative test with COVID before we can get on a plane and head to Germany but we do covet your prayers but God's in control he knows all things he knows all things beginning to end we serve a miracle working God that we believe God is going to heal his body amen and if you're sick in your body today, I speak healing over you. I speak life over you. You shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And not only is he a healer of the body, he's a healer of the mind, but he's also a healer of marriages. But most importantly, he's a healer of the heart. He can take a heart of stone and turn it into a heart of clay. We have a God that can do anything. They're coming back to sing one more song before the man of God comes, but it's such an honor to have Darren and Dewana Sargent from Escondido, California, and I just told him to obey the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. As Brother Josh said, he's not here by accident. We want him to preach whatever God lays on his heart. This is a great couple, and uh, they have been doing ministry most of their life, has an incredible testimony, and I just want God to use them in an incredible way. Can we wor worship with them right now as they sing glorious day. Are you thankful that your sins are washed away? Are you thankful that you're a new creature in Christ Jesus? None of us would be here today were it not for him. I was my shame Who could carry that kind of weight it was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. 
all my failures I tried to hide. It was my too till I met you. You called my name.
I wish somebody in this house right now would lift up the highest praise that you've ever lifted up. Is there anybody living in the light? Is there anybody excited about a glorious day? Aren't you glad that he kicked uh, a man death out of the way? He's got the keys. Uh, he's alive. Uh, and he's worthy to be worshipped and praised. Come on, somebody. Clap your hands and lift your voice and magnify the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There are miracles in this house. Our God is able to do absolutely anything. Praise God. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you there is nothing quite like a Holy Ghost filled, aisle running, pew jumping, devil chasing Pentecostal church service. I feel sorry for those that have never experienced Pentecost because when you get in the Holy Ghost and God starts to work, anything is possible. One more time, could we clap our hands and magnify the name of the Lord? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. I love what I feel in the house of the Lord today. What a delight it has been for my wife and I to be here in the tremendous last two or three days. Amen. The response of all the those that were here was just, uh, you guys are just amazing. And that is all attributed to the leadership that God has blessed you with here at Life at Tupelo. Amen. You are a blessed church with the leadership that God has given you. We absolutely love and appreciate your pastor and his wife and family. And I say family on purpose. I love preacher's kids. Where'd she go? She snuck around. I'm going to tell you something. I know you're standing, but I'm going to be standing for a long time. Y'all got two arms and two legs. You'll be fine. I'm, I'm a little shorthanded, so. The best gift you can give your pastor and his wife is to love their children. Love their kids. I tell my kids often, you're blessed being preacher's kids. But you also have a lot of responsibility being a preacher's kid. Don't hold them to such a high standard that they can't live it. Love on them. Bless them. Pray for them. And when you do that, you bless this, especially this woman right here. Aren't you thankful for an awesome pastor's wife? Is she amazing? I've heard Sister Carney sing for years. I've always been a fan, one of the finest voices in Pentecost. It, I'm telling you, if I had two hands, I'd give you a run for your money on that keyboard. But God decided not to. Amen. Love and appreciate your pastor. He's, he's been a friend to me. And um, it, you, you can never make new old friends. And when you have friends in your life that God places there, I believe he places people in our lives in seasons. And God has placed Brother Jay Carney into my life for the season that we're in. I honor him. It's an honor to be in this pulpit. Um, I've known Dylan Morgan since he was knee-high to a grasshopper, and uh, I'm going to mess this thing up so bad on purpose <laughs> just so he has to fix it. And I'm going to text him when I'm done and say, good luck, buddy. That's for all the times you got my son in trouble. <laughs> I wish he was here. I'd tell some stories. You may not want him back in this pulpit. Y'all tell him I said that. Oh, I'm so excited. Boy, what feels good in here, doesn't it? Feels good. Hey, Amen. Feels good. Anybody ready for a miracle in your life today? Amen. 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 Praise God. As you're turning your Bible, Exodus chapter 5, we begin reading verse number 1. I want to say how good it is to see Brother and Sister Veely. Love and appreciate them. Sister Corey, good to see you. 
Amen. Appreciate this family. Appreciate what they're doing for the kingdom of God. I've had the privilege of being a little connected to New Beginnings. And uh, no, I wasn't adopted. Uh, probably should have been, but uh, nobody would take me. Uh, I'm just kidding. But I uh, love and appreciate them very much and the work that they're doing. And I pray for New Beginnings often. Amen. Exodus chapter 5, verse number 1. And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert, sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you under your burdens? And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and you make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people, their officers, saying, You shall no more give the people straw to make brick. As heretofore, let them go and gather straw for themselves and the tail of the bricks which they did make heretofore you shall lay upon them. You shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. With the help of the Holy Ghost on this Sunday morning, I want to do my best to follow what God has placed upon my heart. I'm going to preach to you the struggle with straw. The struggle with straw. Can we clap our hands one more time to the Lord? Just give him praise. I believe, has positioned this end-time church at a very unique hour in our world's history. Never before has there been such uncertainty concerning the future of our nation, even our world, as we are currently experiencing. Everywhere that you and I look, people are flailing with absolutely no sense of direction. It's important for us to pay close attention as a church and as individual to the times that are around us and the future that is before us because as more than one sage has observed, the future is where you are going to spend the rest of your life. The prophetic words of Peter as he preached on the day of Pentecost ring truer now than probably ever before in our history, and I quote, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation, directionless generation. For us, you and I here today, to get a proper perspective of the direction that I believe the Lord would want us to go, and I may dare say even in this year what God is wanting to do, we must look a bit closer at the tactic of the enemy. And when it comes to the church, of the living God, we be not ignorant concerning the devil's devices. Let me, let me preface my remarks this morning and make something very clear. Not for one moment, not for one moment do I think the church is on its way down. Not one thing in me believes that. Not for one moment do I think that this untoward generation around us is somehow and in some way going to hinder uh, the church and keep it from becoming what God has destined for it to become. In fact, I feel quite the opposite. I believe that this is the greatest hour that the church uh, has ever experienced. This is the hour where miracles, signs, and wonders are very evident. This is the hour where we can speak 
to those things that are not as though they already are. I am a firm believer that the word of God is still true when it tells us where sin doth abound. Grace doth much more abound. I'll stand flat-footed in the face of every enemy and every devil in hell and declare the latter shall be greater than the former. I'll let Satan himself know there shall be light at evening time. Amen. I believe that. Man, I, I was raised in this. All I've known is preaching, praying, prophesying, and peanut brittle. That's all I've known. Amen. I am a firm believer that God will have an apostolic church in this hour that is filled with power for miracles, signs, wonders. There's no question in my mind. I know there are preachers and churches for that matter that only want to focus on the negative, that only want to talk about how dark the night may be, but I still believe this is our finest hour. However, the tragedy lies when the church, that's you and I, the tragedy lies when we pay more attention to the problems around us than we do the promise within us. Can I talk to us today? The problem intensifies when we throw in the proverbial towel and believe that God is no longer active in today's world. The enemy is a liar, and if he can convince you and I that we do not have what it takes to make a difference in this city, make a difference in our world, make a difference in our family, then we might as well close the doors to this beautiful church. Amen. Go to the park, eat fried chicken, and play kickball. I love fried chicken. Can't you tell? The people of God, hear me, the people of God should be the last people that live life with no hope. The people of God should be the last people that walk around town with their tail dragging between their legs. We are the church. We should be like the children of Issachar that have an understanding of the times to know what God wants to do, to know how God wants to move, and to know how God wants to bless. I still believe that the... God in this world, God has placed the church in this world that in this world is looking for people and they're looking for a place who have a purpose for living and, and carry a supernatural peace even in the midst of the storms that seem to be beating so strongly against humanity and the world at large right now. So in our text, we see the children of Israel. Primarily, we are reading about their exodus, their exit out of the land of Egypt shows how God brings his people out of captivity that they had found themselves in. It reveals that no matter what things look like in the present, God has been working to secure a different outcome for the future. But before we can celebrate the fact that God brings them out, we need to also realize that according to the 15th chapter of Genesis, it was God that allowed them to go in. God told Abraham, thy seed is going to go into a strange land, and there they are going to be enslaved for 400 years. Then he says in the 15th chapter of the book of Genesis that afterwards, after their enslavement, they will come out with great substance. He says, I'm going to take them into something that they've never been in before, and they're going to be there for a few years. But when I bring them out, they are going to come out with more than they had when they first went in. It's interesting to note that after God promised this to Abraham, Abraham didn't even live long enough to see the fulfillment of the promise. Abraham died waiting on the promise. And it seems to me that if God wanted to squelch on the deal, if, if God wanted to back out of the promise, this would have been a perfect time because Abraham, the one that he had given the promise to, is now dead. But God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. God kept his word to a dead man. Now, some of you are already ahead of me. It seems rational to me that if God kept his word to a dead man, how much more would God keep his word to those of us that are alive? and waiting on the promises of God. Now, now listen, you've got to understand something. 
It was always in God's mind. It was always in the agenda of God that in Abraham, God was going to produce a seed that, that would become a family, that would ultimately become a nation, and that that nation would become the people of God. And he uses a famine. If you'll study the life of Abraham, he uses a famine that came against the seed of Abraham, his descendants, uh, to drive them strategically into the place that they needed to be. And the Bible says that when a famine broke out, give me just a moment, all of a sudden Jacob and his sons had to move toward Egypt where Joseph had already been strategically placed uh, there in Egypt uh, as a forerunner uh, of miracles for his brother. Uh, I want you to see that God orchestrated the rejection of Joseph by his own family uh, so that it would maneuver him into a perfect place uh, so that in the time of trouble, Joseph would already be on the inside in a position to better the people of God. Uh, I don't know everything that God does. Uh, God doesn't always fill us in on the details, uh, but he told Abraham, Abraham, your children are going to go into slavery, uh, but I'm going to take one of them that they rejected, uh, and I'm going to raise him up. Uh, they're going to lie on him. Uh, they're going to treat him bad. Uh, they're going to send him into captivity. They're going to sell him out for 20 pieces of silver. He's going to end up in a prison. But when it's all said and done, I'm going to raise him up because my plan is bigger than the devil's plan. And I got a future for the people of God. God's not finished yet. Joseph did not become the prince of Egypt without going through the rejection of his brothers. I'm afraid that we are living in a time where we're teaching people. So after you've given your seed and after you said your prayer, after you put your hand on the pink Cadillac, you run into peril and you get shocked uh, because all you've been told about is the promise uh, and you haven't been told about the peril. But don't let the peril intimidate you because the peril is part of the process uh, that God uses to get you to your promise. Uh, I know some of you are going through hell and high water, but I've come with a direct word from the Holy Ghost. Uh, God woke me up at four o'clock this morning and said, this is the direction. I said, yeah, Lord, come on. Uh, I'm so tired tired and sick and sick and tired of the devil running some of us over thinking we don't have any type of standing with God because of the trouble. Amen. It's the trouble that brings you to a place of triumph. It's the struggle. Hallelujah. Now God sends Joseph over in Egypt and not only is he there in Egypt, but he's in a position in Egypt. A job that is by divine calling of God so that God would have a man in a high place. So that when the famine hit, the people of God would be able to go and be taken care of. God always puts people in position to bless his people. I wish I could preach on that. I preach on that four times this day and 17 more times tomorrow. I'm so thankful for the times God puts people in our path that bless us. Amen. I'm so glad that God already placed Joseph there to bless his people. They didn't even know what was going to happen, but God had somebody there to bless them. Don't worry, Ruth, if you're gleaning behind the reapers. There's a Boaz uh, somewhere there to bless you. Don't worry if you've been listening to the word and your finances are messed up and you're hungry and you're worried if God has to use a little boy with just two fish uh, and five loaves of bread, God's going to have somebody there to bless you. Hang on. Hannah, I know the prophet thinks you're drunk, but what's coming out of your mind, mouth is something that's going to birth a revival for my people. Amen. Don't worry about it, dear sister. Weeping may endure for a night, but I've come to tell you joy's coming in your morning, so hang on. Hang on. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Don't you dare say I can't. Don't you dare say it's over, because with God, all things are possible. So we know the story. Jacob comes up with his sons to meet Joseph because there's a famine. 
in the land. And all of a sudden, they were forced to go to Egypt. Egypt was the only place that had the economic structure. Follow me for just a moment. Economic structure to accommodate the famine. And the structure had been developed by Joseph because God had given his man a plan. I'm so thankful that God gives his man and his woman a plan. It always works. I don't care what times we are in. I don't care what the economic climate does. I don't care what the stock market does. I don't care what the person in the White House does. When God gives a man a plan, it always is there to divide the famine. I don't care if it looks like hell is breaking out everywhere around us. When God gives a man a plan, it will provide right in the middle of the drought and the famine. I have stood at the brink of nothing many times in my life, looking into the void, wondering if God was going to come through when suddenly a word was spoken and a plan was given to the man of God. And because of that word and because of that plan, men and women staring at nothing suddenly begin to realize God has the ability to put a word in my mouth where I can speak to those things that are not as though they already are. It is no accident that God sent Jay and Demetra Carney to life at Tupelo when he did. He put a plan in the heart of the man of God. And it does not matter what yesterday looked like and it doesn't even matter what tomorrow may bring. Because when God gives a man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Amen. Let me preach to every man in this house. When God speaks a word, you rise up and declare it to your family. Thus saith the Lord. And when God gives his man a plan, it doesn't matter what Egypt does. I'm not even, I'm not even close to the good stuff. My arm's about ready to grow. I'm telling you. Starting already. Look at that. It's just growing. Woo. Y'all good? All right. So Jacob's family now moves, kit and caboodle, they move it all to where Je Joseph is. Seventy members of a family are living in Egypt. And they begin to prosper. And there, the Pharaoh that had accommodated them is now dead. A new Pharaoh arises that does not regard the God of Joseph. And the Bible says that he begins to oppress them. Watch this. And it was during this time of oppression that they end up as slaves. They were actually in Egypt 430 years, but 400 of those years, they were slaves. Those 400 years of slavery were a direct result of a Pharaoh that rose to power that had no respect for Joseph or the people of God. Joseph is gone by now. And so now they're oppressed. They're in Egypt. The Pharaoh who loved them and accommodated them is dead. His predecessor, a slave, makes them into slaves. Things are getting worse. Generations are passing. Their traditions of worshiping God are becoming weaker and weaker and weaker. They've almost been neutralized. They've lost their focus. They've lost their praise. They've lost their purpose. They have become like the Egyptians and starting to worship idols and animals. They've forgotten their covenants with God. They've forgotten how to worship God. They've forgotten how to praise God. They they had forgotten their feast. Uh, they had forgotten their parties. Uh, they had forgotten their celebrations uh, and all the things that were meaningful to them. But they, uh, even though they had forgotten everything about the true and living God, God had not forgotten them. Now watch this. As they are oppressed and their oppression gets worse, the Bible tells us in our text uh, a strange thing began to happen. The Pharaoh takes straw away from them. He commands them to make more bricks without the bonding agent of straw. He gets really tough on them. He's trying to squash them. He's trying to hold them down. He's trying to control them. But a strange thing happened. The harder he got on them, the more they multiplied. The Bible says the more they were afflicted, the more they grew. It's a strange thing about being a child of God. You would think we would flourish the best when things are going really good. But that's not the way it is when God really wants you to flourish. When God's about ready to bless you, amen, he'll send an enemy to afflict you. That is why when you see the enemy coming, you ought to start rejoicing. Because that means that an increase is about to break forth. I'm tired of seeing good people run over by the enemy that's trying to bring affliction. Uh, about ready to give up because things are bad. Hear me. Uh, I know we're living in a dark hour, but this 
is not an hour for a meltdown. This is an hour for a miracle. Can I get an amen in the house? This isn't an hour to throw in the towel. This is an hour to look up. For your redemption draweth nigh. Now, I'm going to try to slow down a little bit. Y'all got me all excited and happy. I love preaching to a good church. Let me just talk to you for a moment. I, uh, I'm afraid we often shout at the wrong time. We shout when we come out of an issue. But we ought to shout when we walk into trouble. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but somebody has been up underneath some issues and some trouble, and you've been struggling for a while, and the enemy thought that you were going to get, the enemy told you that you were going to be killed and destroyed. But isn't it strange? The more the enemy affects you and afflicts you and attacks you, and amen, you may be here today saying, it's the worst time in my life, but I'm growing more than I ever have. Things are tougher than they've ever been, but I feel good. God stronger than I've ever felt before. I'm going through more issues in my life. I've got more threats than I can handle, but I'm still standing. And I count not myself to be an apprehended, but I forget those things that are behind me and I press. You ought to look at somebody right now and say, I'm still here. I'm still praising. I don't have any straw, but I'm still here. I've got no help, but I'm still here. I've been through hell and high water, but I'm still here. Amen. I don't know what I'm going to do but I'm still here I cried myself to sleep last night but I'm still here I lost my car I lost my house I lost my dog but I'm still here the devil means things for evil but God always turns it around to good the more they were afflicted the more they grew now, what that simply means is the more straw Pharaoh took from them, the more children they started having. Now, I hope I don't have to tell you where babies come from. We just had a marriage retreat. Hopefully, you figured it out. But isn't it interesting that the more that was taken from them, away from them in tangibles, the deeper they went into relationship? It's interesting to me. So God allows what they think they should have to be taken away, and it only makes them discover what they really do have. Their values change. They started appreciating the relationship rather than the straw that they didn't have. Isn't it funny how God will take away one thing in your life but cause the other things in your life to become more valuable? I mean, those women started having babies like a rabbit factory. Can you imagine? Pastor Carney? Showing up at the well, the women drawing water, and here comes Bertha. Hope nobody's here named Bertha. She waddles up there. I don't even hardly have to pretend. She waddle up there, and she hear the news. Susie in the village next door having triplets. Oh, really? I'm the first octomom. I'm having eight. Those women started having babies like nobody's business. Because what was taken from them in what they thought they needed drove them into what they really desired and God took the affliction that was pressing them down and caused them to start to grow. I don't know what's been happening in this church. Your pastor hasn't given me a list. I don't know what families are under attack, but I got a word from God for you today. Get ready. Get ready. Reproduction's coming. Get ready. Growth is happening. Get ready. Revival Revival is coming. I know you've been in revival, but I felt like the Lord spoke to me early this morning to tell this church, you've not seen anything yet. You might as well get your eyes to a bigger place because God's about ready to show.
show you. I got more. COVID may have pushed you down. Coronavirus may have caused the hardship, but I feel like something good is about to happen. But here, here's our issue. We start griping over what we've lost instead of thanking God for what we have left. <laughs> See, you got to understand the victory was not in the straw. Stop praying about the straw. If you were in Egypt, praying about the straw, Lord, you know, we don't have any straw. If I had more straw, I could make more bricks. Uh, and Pharaoh's putting the pressure on us, uh, and he's taking away the bonding agent uh, that is used to make more bricks. Uh, and without it, God, uh, we're not going to be able to do uh, what we have been asked to do. Uh, the bricks will not form very easily. Uh, they'll start falling apart. Uh, we won't be able to meet our quota. God, uh, give us more bricks. Uh, what? the problem your vision is too small because you're just praying to be a better slave when God's trying to make you a better son and a better daughter and a powerful adversary for the kingdom of God don't pray to be a better slave in the present when God's trying to set you free in your future amen God I'm tired of praying about stuff that I have no business I have no control over because you're one to get me to a new place Here's what we do. We focus on the straw. Well, I don't have enough. I can't make enough. COVID's doing this. COVID's doing that. Everything's been taken. My job's in jeopardy. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. Praying for more straws, just asking to be a better slave. God isn't interested in you and I becoming better slaves. He wants us to become better warriors. He wants us to be successful. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Get your eye off the straw. Get your eye off what the enemy thought you needed to make your life successful. There is a God that has a plan. Sit on the straw to become a better slave. Get your eyes off the straw and put them on the Savior. Remember, it's the peril. It's the promise. Uh, that's part of the process uh, that leads you to the promise. Uh, quit looking at what you don't have uh, and start focusing on what you do have. I've got no straw, but I got a Savior. I've got no straw, but I got a promise. Uh, I got no straw, but I feel revival. I got no straw, but I have a future. I've got no straw, but he's got a destiny. I've got no straw, but he is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. <laughs> Pastor Carney, it could have been very easy for me in my life to walk around saying, oh, I don't have a left hand. Sorry for those who are at marriage retreat, you're going to hear it again. I'm not going to be able to do sign language. They don't only get half the message. Why is he stuttering? He can't talk on the phone and pick his nose at the same time. Y'all do that. I've seen you in your cars. You ever pulled up to a stoplight and someone's digging for Beverly Hills gold? I could have spent my life wallowing around, griping and complaining. I can't participate in the Sunday school song. Here's the church, there's the steeple. Open up the door and there's all the people. I only had four people show up at my church. I was going the opposite direction of everybody else. I could have spent my time, ain't got straw, ain't got straw, ain't got straw, ain't got straw. And God says, listen, bozo, I created you this way. I've let you go through what you're going through because I got a better plan for you than straw. I got success. I got a revival. I got a blessing. Come on, 
somebody. It isn't about the straw. Keep Quit praying about the straw. God's using the absence of straw to help you connect with what you do have. Not so that you can be better in the situation you're in right now, but be his, because he's getting you ready to take you someplace where walls are going to fall, where rivers are going to run, where manna is going to feed, where blessing. As long as they had straw, i got to hurry, as long as they had straw, they never would have been in a place where they could grow. The removal of the straw produced a renewing of a relationship, and those Israelites began to multiply like never before because the affliction had a purpose. God's bringing our churches to a place in this season. I told you I was going to mess everything up so Dylan Morgan could fix it. And he ain't smart enough to fix this mess. You've been asking the Lord to make your situation better. God's going to pull you out of it entirely. Look at someone and say, I'm coming out. The bricks won't matter. The straw won't matter. The storm won't matter. The famine won't matter. The pestilence won't matter. The gossip won't matter. The hardship won't matter. The enemy won't matter because you're going to leave it all behind you anyways in Egypt because God's getting ready to take you up out of here because God is something better for you than the situation you're struggling with. That is why you can look later in the word of God and a prophet would arise to say it is good that we have been afflicted because I would have never grown to where I have grown if I hadn't have gone through what you've gone through. I love those people that come to church with a vengeance. I love those people that walk into the house of God going through hell and high water but they're on the edge of their seat saying, oh, I can't wait for Sister Carney to hit that first note. Amen. You want a dead, dull church? Sit by somebody who's got it all together but if you want a miraculous, powerful, get next to somebody who's been up under the pressure. Every bit of straw has been taken but they come up by my God, I'm going to see God do something today. Now, I grew up on a farm in Idaho. We didn't have a whole lot. We were, potatoes were a good thing in our house. I think that's why God made you be born this way. This looks like kind of like a potato. Spud Sergeant. That's my new wrestling name. Some of y'all didn't get that. Never mind. But we, we didn't have one of those fancy water hoses that had a proper end on the nozzle. We had one that had been cut off because I had to siphon gas out of the lawnmower to put into my car to get to work. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So when you turned on the water, and that hose only went so far, what did you have to do to have that pressure reach a little bit farther? You had to mash on it. Is that a good word in the South? You had to mash on it. You had to squeeze it. And the more I would squeeze it, the farther the stream of water would reach. If I needed to reach that flower bed over there, I'd aim it just right and I'd put some pressure on it. And the more I put on it, the farther it would reach. I felt like the Holy Ghost wants to tell this church and every family that has been in such a mess in 2020, the pressure is causing your reach to expand beyond this corner to a place. I felt something in the Holy Ghost in prayer. Amen. When I was drinking coffee, there is a place that God is putting life at Tupelo where it's going to have a farther reach. Stand with me, stand with me. i got to hurry. I don't understand the devil. If he had any sense, he wouldn't squeeze me the way that he squeezed me. Because the more he squeezes me, the farther I'm going. I've seen this in churches. I mentioned it earlier. I love those people that come to church with a vengeance. I mean, they're like, arr, 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 come on, let's have church. My God. Arr. 
I mean, they are ready. They're like a bulldog in a chicken coop. They're about ready to go absolutely crazy because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, they fought hell and high water, and this is their chance that God, God can reach down in the middle of their mess, and they come up out of that with the praise because the Bible says that God uses the praise to silence the enemy and the avenger. Come on. You want something from God? Be a worshiper. You want something from God? Be somebody who's been up under some pressure that have come to church with a praise on. Amen. Because God's about ready to break you through. I live in California, the land of nuts and fruits and quacks and governor who's a pressing, pressing, pressing. thought you were going to silence the church. Now it's forced our churches to go beyond the scope of four walls to reach a world that we never thought we would be able to reach and the enemy shaking his head. They're having revival. They're praying people through. Even if it's Dylan Morgan preaching, they got things happening. Amen. In the you, you got to get who you get. I mean, you got Dylan Morgan, then you got a one arm guy. What do you expect? And, and, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. But the church is exploding. You've got two services. You're getting ready to go into three. You're getting ready to have to probably add a Saturday night as well. Why? Not because you can be written in the Pentecostal Life magazine. It's because the affliction that the devil thought he was going to destroy this church with has caused a revival. My God, I feel prophetic anointing in this house. I know I only got a few moments, but I feel like God is about ready to release some of us into the supernatural atmosphere where miracle signs. It's time you lay hands on the sick and see them recover. It's time you cast out devils. It's time you pray them through. Pray them through in the grocery store. Pray them through in the market. Pray them through in your job. Pray them through on the street. Pray them through in the cafe. Pray them through at Starbucks. Come on, somebody. The more they were afflicted, the more they grew. Lift your hands up in the air. Amen. As the music comes, let's begin to magnify the Lord for just a moment. Some of y'all underneath some pressure. Come on, release your faith right now with a praise. Release your faith right now with some worship. I do not believe God is finished doing what he wants to do in your life. I believe this is the beginning of miracles. I believe God is about ready to show supernatural power. There are gifts of the Spirit in operation even now. God's about ready to show himself strong. You need a miracle? I want you to get out from where you are. You need a touch from God? I want you to find a place in this altar, and I want you to worship. Come on, you need a miracle. Come on, you need a blessing. Come on, you need an answer from God on a Sunday morning. God's not finished. God's not finished. But I'm going through it. It's okay. God's not finished. But my back's up against the wall. It's okay. God's not finished. Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. Children of Israel finally get up out of Egypt. Holy Ghost is fixing to do something right here. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. The children of Israel have come up out of Egypt. 
they, 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 they don't believe the words that God gave to Moses to possess the land. So they spend 40 years wandering in the wilderness, griping and complaining with their mouth open, griping about everything. Till God instructs Joshua to take them in. Moses is gone. And the first thing they face is the city of Jericho. and It's got big walls. And God says, this time, you're going to march around the city. You're going to keep your mouth shut until I tell you to open it because you spent 40 years walking around griping and groaning. So you're going to break the curse of the previous generation. And when I tell you to open your mouth and you open your mouth, what comes out of it is going to cause a wall to fall. God had to take them through the cycle of breaking the curse of the previous generation to see the miraculous. I wonder what could happen in our lives uh, if every wall that we're facing, every struggle that we're dealing with, uh, every problem that's uh, up against us, uh, we would look at it uh, and something would come out of us uh, that would cause that issue to start to crumble. I wonder what would happen. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, I wonder what would happen if a dear saint of God uh, would begin to shout uh, like you've never shouted before. You got issues, start shouting. There's cancer, start shouting. There's doubt, start shouting. There's corona, start shouting. Our God is able. I wonder if we can lift a shout right now. I wonder behind your mask if you can lift your voice as they begin to go ahead. Hey Amen. Would you release what's inside of you and let God do what he wants to do? reach for your miracle. Come on, reach for your blessing. I know you've been afflicted, but I feel power. I feel revival coming.
I feel to do something to the Holy Ghost right now. I want you to extend your arms towards your pastor and his wife. They are going through a battle they've never been through before with the diagnosis that Bishop Carney has gotten. But we're believing that a miracle is going to happen. And I felt like this church needs to pray and become the arms that the, the, the hands that hold up the arms of the man and the woman of God as they carry this load uh, and pray for Bishop in the name of Jesus God right now I pray for Pastor Carney in the name of Jesus strengthen him I pray for Sister Carney strengthen her encourage her God let your hand be upon her God touch Bishop we're believing for a miracle even now God we're believing in the name of Jesus Come on, somebody that knows how to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. There are chains breaking in this sanctuary. There are things happening in the spirit realm that we don't even know about. God is doing something right now in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands to the Lord? We serve a great God. Out of our problems, out of our pressure, God is going to reveal his promise to every one of us. And his purposes for your life are not finished. If you're still breathing, you're still standing here today, God is not through with you. God is not through with you. I speak life over you. I speak life over your family. You shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. God is going to use every one of us under the sound of my voice right now to bring him glory. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. That's our whole purpose, our whole goal, our whole desire is to lift him up. We say yes to you, Jesus. We say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. Will you say yes right now? Yes, Jesus. Use us, God. Use us, Lord. Use us, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for obeying the Holy Ghost, Brother Darren Sergeant. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. I pray today you leave encouraged, no matter what you may be facing. You leave encouraged today that God is for us and not against us. He's been preparing us for this moment. Everything we've been through is not by accident. He's been preparing us. Amen. So when you leave here today, you leave here with your shoulders square, your head held high, and speak in the name of Jesus over your life, over your family, and over your situation. Something good will come out of it, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word that we've heard. We thank you for your presence that we felt. God, I pray that we will leave changed and challenged 
And today I pray that you will use every one of us when we leave this place to minister to those that are hurting, to speak life to those that are bound. God, let chains be loose. You have called us to be the church, and these signs shall follow them that believe. God, you're going to use us this week. Let us be sensitive to every situation around us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. Amen. God bless you. Greet one another. Social distance. Be careful. Be safe. Don't forget, church, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We do have corporate prayer tomorrow night at 7. Certainly, if you can be here, if you can't pray at home. But don't forget revival Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Brother Dylan Morgan, come expecting a miracle. So good to have all of our guests. So good to have the Birds family that might have slipped out already. So good to have your mom and dad, Brother Jason.